Hey, Lynn, you want to be on YouTube? Okay. I got several comments on my last video that said they missed you because you weren't in it. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, but you're very cute in your pajamas. <laughs> no, I didn't think they'd notice, but you said it, and now they know it's my pajamas. Okay, see you later. Okay, bye. Goodbye, friends. Hi, friends. Today we're going to go for a Jeep ride off into the Arizona desert to find an old abandoned mine. I'm following a couple of friends, and uh, just for the record, the most valuable safety equipment you can have when off-roading is more than one vehicle. Let's go. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. That's Bruce talking to Jason in his four-wheel drive tracker and Bruce's motorcycle there. We're going to go and do some off-roading up here by Lake Havasu City. Well, we just got off of the highway and we stopped here to consult the maps, having a little conflab. Seems as though the road is different than the map shows. There's some big construction stuff going on over there to the right, like industrial stuff, and they've fenced off where the road used to go. But I don't really care. I'm just following them. I'll go wherever they go. I'm just coming along as a support vehicle. Of course, secretly hoping that one of them gets stuck so I can be the hero and pull them out. I've said this before that the dash cam never shows just how steep these going downs and going ups are. Um, some of these are pretty severe in terms of the approach angle and the departure angle. Uh, my Jeep's lifted two and a half inches, so clearance is rarely a problem. We're going down into a wash here. The washes are actually the roughest in terms of getting bounced around uh, because you're going slow in places where it's, you know, treacherous for the traction and stuff. But in the washes, the razors create washboards, so, and you go faster in the washes, so the washes will uh, jar your false teeth. And no, for the record, I do not have false teeth, but... Some of these roads uh, seems like I might be knocking them out and getting false teeth. Down in the washes like this, uh, you can get deep ruts, so it gets kind of noisy. I have a skid plate, so it's making noise, but it's not doing any damage. The other thing that happens down in the washes like this is that you get what's called Arizona pinstriping, those lines in your paint. You know that it's going to be a challenging passing when the guys ahead of you wait for each other to pass. Now they're up there waiting for me to see if I make it. Not to worry, guys. We call it off-roading because we don't actually need a road. The road gets too bad, we go off-road. I'm being impressed with Bruce's motorcycle riding skills. It's hard enough to stay upright with four wheels here on this kind of stuff. Certainly is a level of motorcycle expertise beyond me. You know, my dash cam stabilization is smoothing out the ride for you. You see those washboards coming up in the wash? <laughs> my kidneys are hanging on for dear life. And we've arrived at our destination. An old mine. So this is where we're going? Yeah, this is expected. I'm under and whelmed. <laughs> yeah, a rock mine, which I think means that they're just mining Wait rocks. a minute. You just took me through 10 miles of that to a rock mine Come instead on, of a man. gold it's, mine? It's the journey. Everybody Jason. knows that. It's not the destination. It's the journey. It says that on my wall. At home. It's not the destination, <laughs> it's the destination. <laughs> <laughs> 
see, now you know that you're, you're, uh, whoa. Yeah, you got some desert stuff on there. Oh, the pinstriping? Yeah. yeah. That happens. Uh, That's a cattle it's not, right it's not the first time. Uh, so this is the hole in the ground. This oh. Is, this makes it all worth it. That's why it's fenced. So yeah. you can't go get the, what'd you say, rocks? Yeah, this is the <laughs> rock mine. They're mining rocks here. I don't know why they went below the ground for them. There's I was just going to say, it seemed like a long way to go for a rock. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's a view. What, what's all that over there? Uh, is that's that? like a border, probably. No, actually, that's a... Um, that looks like a town. Is that the Heights? Yeah, that's how it's the Heights. There's There's another town way over there. Yeah, um, the Heights is where uh, people said you used to be able to camp there, but I think they don't let you know. There's a little trail on there, area. Yeah. That looks like it's headed toward Crazy Fred's. So, what do we got here? We got the mine bunkhouse. Well, we think it was the bunkhouse. The house is gone, but the bunk is still here. Oh, and the garbage dump. Look at that. They were eating out of tin cans. Whoa. Yeah, look at all these tin cans. Isn't this exciting? Oh, yeah, they had a picture. Huh? Yeah. A lot of them got a bullet hole in them, though. This one got a lot of bullet holes. Bullet holes. I think uh, they got bullet holes because they ran out of can openers. Oh, so they shot the things out of them. Yeah, that's what I would do. Well, according to the internet, the mine, as far as interest goes, was a bust. <laughs> but the stove is here. But the stove. Now the stove full of bullet holes. That's what everybody come. Ouch. What'd you do to me? Stop that. <laughs> the, tree the stove. That's what everybody comes to see. Yep. Huh? That's why I keep it. It's the famous. The hole in the ground is just the rock stove. mine stove. What are you doing, Jason? Uh, I'm looking at this uh, bush. We're not going back the same way we came, and uh, this wash is like a super highway compared to some of the places on the 10 mile trip to get here. But again, the washboards in this, they are vibrating us severely. Ooh, thought maybe Bruce took a spill with all that dust, but he did not. We're on the way home now, paralleling the highway off to our left. We'll be there soon. This is the road into Craigie Wash, very popular uh, Bureau of Land Management, BLM uh, boondocking site. And we have about, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 rigs of friends in here. It's uh, kind of nice because it's out of the wind. Although if you come here, you need to go in farther, about another half a mile or so, to get up high enough to have line of sight to the um, cell tower for better internet connection. Some of us who do YouTube have to drive out a ways to upload our videos. Home again. That trip was a little more challenging than the dash cam can ever show, that 10 miles going to the mine. But I look upon that trip as an analogy of my off-roading experience and my camping experience and my RVing experience for the last few years in the Arizona desert. I used to have the tracker, like Jason was driving. Mine was actually a Suzuki sidekick. And then I had the motorcycle, like Bruce was driving. 
And um, now I've got the Jeep. So I'm following something that is an analogy to my own progression through this experience. Uh, as I look at it, with regard to the Suzuki sidekick, the tracker and the tracker, uh, my Jeep has taken over some of the necessary driving skills to negotiate difficult passages um, because instead of me having to clutch it and a five-speed manual transmission, I've got uh, an automatic and then going up and down the steep inclines and declines. I've got traction control and uh, differential computerized braking and hill descent and those kinds of things that uh, a modern four-wheel drive vehicle can um, do to take over some of the necessary things that you have to do when you don't have those. Um, with regard to the motorcycle, I like to think of it as uh, having gotten wiser when I'm sitting in my Jeep with air conditioning or a heater and the stereo going. Uh, I'm not eating dust. <laughs> I'm also uh, on four wheels instead of two. In the case of my tricycle, three wheels instead of two. And um, if you've heard me talk about that transition before, I went to the three-wheel tricycle electric one because... Uh, I laid my motorcycle down in the desert. Actually, on that trip, I was following Bruce. Uh, we were both on motorcycles. Uh, and I got up from that feeling very lucky to have not broken my leg as I laid it down in the desert and said, I'm too old. I like to think that what uh, this whole analogy is, is that I've gone from the motorcycle to the tracker to the a more comfortable and easier to drive Jeep as being a progression towards my wisdom, that I've gotten smarter, that I'm wiser. I think the fact is that I just got older. We're going to leave here tomorrow and follow some of these people down to Quartzsite for a night and then Lynn and I are going to head back towards the ranch in Sonoida. We'll probably stop for one night at Pacacho Peak again, just because we really like that place. Uh, from Sonoida, we're going to go to the airport in Tucson and fly up to frozen South Dakota for a family reunion. Uh, Come on back, we'll see you soon. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.